Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Dungeons of Infinity. This game is just delivering for all of the Kickstarter backers. I actually did not back this one. Jack reached out to me and sent it to me. And so I'm very lucky to be able to play it for you guys today. It is really fun. I'm excited to show it to you. Now, the game comes with this. Look at this. It's a campaign book. Now, the uh, every game can be played, not every, most of them can be played either cooperatively or competitively. And you've got one-off scenarios that are in the front. And then the best part of the entire thing, though, that Jack has done is he has created a campaign. And his campaign is very interesting. He set it out into 10 chapters. Each chapter focuses on one of the 10 base heroes in the game. There's 10 base heroes. You would have seen that in the intro. And uh, what you do is each chapter is three dungeons long. And so you'll do those three dungeons and you'll learn more about that character as well as, the, as, well as this overarching story. And you've got 10 chapters times three dungeons. That's 30 scenarios that go together to create a story. Now, I've only played the first one, but my son and I really like it and we're excited to keep going. They also have mini campaigns where you do maybe uh, multiple, like three, cam uh, three scenarios from the beginning part of this book in a row to create a mini campaign campaign and you can play those cooperatively or competitively what we're going to do in this one we're going to play the orb quest this quest will take about 60 to 180 minutes since i'm playing it two player i'd probably put it closer to the 90 minute mark uh we'll play for a bit i might jump ahead and finish the game or i might just do the whole thing we'll see we'll see how long it takes while we're doing the playthrough uh, we have our setup here. We have our dungeon lord is going to be random. And you'll see this when we set up. We've got our tile content chart we're going to pick is random. We have our dungeon infinity tiles. Now these are just your basic dungeon tiles. This is what we're going to be exploring in. We're actually going to set them up in a specific way here. Shuffle and place the tiles in three stacks of 10. Uh, 10 to the east, 10 to the west, and 10 to the north, south, or middle. And when you move east, you draw from that stack. When you move west, draw from the other stack. When you move north or south, draw from the north, south stack. When a stack is gone, you can no longer move in that direction. Kind of a cool way of forcing you to move around a dungeon, not just go one specific way. Uh, so I've got my three stacks. There's a total of 30 dungeon uh, tiles that are out. So I've got my 30 dungeon tiles out and ready to go. We have here, we're going to roll 1d20. The result is the tile number, and this is for setting up our orb and sentinel. Uh, we'll roll 1d20. The result is the tile number where the orb is located, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the orb. We're going to draw a random sentinel or more. Well, since we're only playing two player, we're going to be just drawing one and place it face down on the table with an orb card taken from the risk body deck. And you, you'll see what that is in a second. Place both cards face down on the table and put the roll to die on the top of the stack to remind you which tile has the sentinel and the orb. You must defeat the sentinel, sentinel to get the orb. And you can see here, one to three player, one sentinel. So you can play this with just one. I've liked it the most at two. I've played one game with, with solo and it was good, but I like the interaction with two heroes. So we're going to do two. We have some special rules here. When the tile containing the orb is first re revealed, your hero may retreat without being attacked. Normally that's not the case. Uh, normally, if you reveal a tile with enemies, you have to try and, es and escape them and uh, they might get a free attack on you. That won't happen here. When the orb room is revealed, follow the tile content chart as normal, except place any minions called for on the stack with the sentinel. When the room is next entered by a hero, the minions will attack before the sentinel. All minions and the sentinel must be defeated to retrieve the orb. One AP is required to pick up the orb. If you have four or five, we can ignore that. Our goal is just to retrieve the orb and return it to the starting tile without any heroes becoming exhausted. That's our cooperative, our, our cooperative uh, goal. We'll give our d20 a quick roll, and we've got a 4. So tile 4 is where that orb is going to be. I've drawn a random sentinel, and you can tell it's a sentinel because the back side of it says that they are a sentinel. And I've grabbed one of the orbs. doesn't really matter which one it is. This gloom weaver is protecting this orb, and we need to defeat that gloom weaver on tile 4. Here we have our tile content charts. I'm going to go ahead and randomly mess them up like so. 
and let's go ahead and grab this one. This will be our tile chart. So uh, if we find tile one through six, there's gonna be a body in there. If we have a tile seven through 12, it'll be a debris. 13 through 19 is missed, and 20 through 25 is a chest. You can always play on hard by flipping it over, and it'll have different numbers. The biggest thing is the miss are where you're gonna find enemies normally, so there's more missed tiles on the hard. Uh, this game is definitely hard enough, <laughs> so we'll stay on the standard side for this playthrough. Now, it wouldn't be a great dungeon delver if we didn't have tons of decks of cards. I love it. Uh, so we have our body cards where we could find lots of different potential loot or enemies. Miss, which is almost always enemies. Debris could also be totally random. Who knows we find in debris. And then chest cards. Chest cards are generally good things like gold. And gold you can turn into coins if you go back to the merchant. Uh, they have a coin value, but they also take up a carrying spot because they're heavy. But then you can go to the merchant and trade it in for actual coins. Now, in each of these stacks, there are two different kinds of cards that you might see. Uh, you might see ones that have these symbols right here. They're called catastrophic events. I highly recommend your first few plays, removing them. I'm going to remove them for this playthrough because I find them to be very challenging. And I, like I said, I feel like it's challenging enough. <laughs> The other thing is the campaign has all of these awesome cards in it. Okay, so all of these ones, it's got this symbol up on the right. You're going to want to pull all of those out of these decks as well because you don't want to use those in a regular one-off scenario. And then you will pull those or bring those into the game uh, in the actual campaign. Over on our left-hand side over here, we have our sentinel enemies. These are stronger enemies, but they don't move. Just like the enemies that you reveal from the mist will not move in, out of that room that they're in. And then we have the dungeon lord. So there are three dungeon lords in the base game. Uh, and there's this dungeon lord deck here, which actually tells you what they do, how they activate. So you're going to get both of those, shuffle them up. And I should say all of these decks are shuffled whenever you do this. You always are going to shuffle all of them up. Uh, so when the Dungeon Lord comes out, we'll reveal which one we're going to fight against or run away from. <laughs> Probably run away from, because we, we aren't going to know what it is. That's the way I like to play. Way over here on this side, we have our reward deck. So when we do get into combat, we can potentially earn these reward cards, and that's a huge deck. And then over here are the minions that we'll be fighting. However, once again, if this is the first time that you're playing, or if you're recording like I am, get rid of all the ones that have a star on them. Those are the stretch goal enemies, and they are hard. Uh, don't need them. Oh, also, I have one of them that's also for the campaign. I have removed all of those from the minion deck. You can, uh, you can include them if you want, but he recommends you only include one set of them so like there are four of these power constructs so maybe just shuffle in the four power constructs if you decide to don't put all of them in it can get pretty brutal now i've talked about the merchant a little bit at the beginning of the game us as heroes can buy stuff from the merchant and we can always go back to the merchant later in the game the merchant has two decks an item deck and a weapon or equipment deck so what you do to start off the game is you'll have these shuffled you'll draw six of these items and four of the weapons or equipment and those are available to purchase at the beginning of the game our six items we have available to us are the scroll of silence draw zero lord event cards and produce zero noise for three turns that's ridiculous uh, the massive power scroll, but man, those are both costing six. Oh, we can get a pickaxe, we can get a rope, we can get a key, or we can get a health potion. Here we have our four equipment cards. We got a fine sword. That's pretty awesome. That'll increase our power and increase our hit chance by two. We've got a staff, we've got a fire robe, and we've got an axe. So now what I'll do with all of these cards is place them off to the side. Next, let's talk about our threat meter. So at the beginning of the game, that dungeon lord doesn't know we're in the dungeon. But as we do certain actions, we're going to decrease this threat, uh, this threat tracker all the way down to zero. Once we do that, we start drawing those dungeon lord event cards. And when we draw one that has a number that matches any of the tiles out on the board, he spawns or she spawns. I think most of them are he's. Uh, they spawn and then they're just going to try and chase us down. <laughs> uh, so we start, since we're playing at two player, at 14 for our threat meter. And things that will cause us to go down. If we run, it's going to go down. If we begin combat, it's going to go down by two. And if we reveal a dungeon tile, we're going to also uh, push it down. Heroes may also have abilities that state you need to draw a dungeon card because whatever you're doing is really loud. And if that happens, when the, the threat meter's out, instead of drawing a card, you reduce the threat meter by the amount that is on the card. 
Now let's go ahead and meet our two heroes. And actually, I'm going to be playing with two female heroes because I think they're pretty awesome. There are 10, you guys, 10 in the base game. Tons to choose from. And there's lots going on on this player board. So over here on the top left-hand side, you see your hit chance. Whenever you're rolling dice, you're trying to get to that number or lower. So this game, lower is better. <laughs> I'm not really good at rolling dice low, so we'll see how that, how that works. Noise. Whenever you start rolling or rolling, drawing dungeon lord cards, a lot of times they might say the noisiest hero or noise equal to some level. This is how noisy your hero is. Now that's if they haven't done something that's louder. But so our base value for um, Sephenrine here is a uh, noise of three. She can carry a total of four items. There are some items that are considered pocket items. And one of those, which you actually start off with in the game, you start off with three coins. Now that's not three gold, three coins. The coins you can put in your pocket so they don't take up any slots. And we can use that to buy any items that are at the market right at the beginning. We can see here, this is our power. That's how we're gonna determine how much damage we do when we do an attack. Our defense, if we do get hit, our action points, how many action points we have. Uh, this tells us what level we're at. We're at level one. Up here, that's our total health. When we get below five, we become weakened. Hopefully that never happens, but uh, weakened isn't good. I'll just put it that way. Down here, it shows you what types of items you can hold in your hands. So we can only hold a staff. Uh, feet, we can have a certain type of uh, feet, footwear that we can wear. Here's a certain type of body wear that we can wear. Uh, we have weaknesses to certain attacks. So we're weak to cold attacks and to poison. Over here, we have our Lord event actions. So once the Lord event, uh, I should say the Dungeon Lord is revealed, he's out on the table. If ever we do any of these things, so either run or combat, at the end of our turn, we're gonna have to draw a Dungeon Lord card. And if we do both, then that means we have to draw two cards. Yeah, yeah, he's they're no fun, okay? I'm just saying, <laughs> we, we want to avoid them. Next, you'll want to grab the eight ability cards for your character. Now, four of them will have level ones, and four of them will be level two, three, four, and five. I'm going to take my two through five and just set them underneath her because we're not going to have access to those until we level up. We will have access to our four level ones right off the get-go, and we'll look at those as we start playing. But make sure to grab those and you're good to go. Our second character here, our assassin, is Saskia. Look at her. She looks so cool. Hit chance, 15. She can have swords or blades, like knives, or even axes. She can't have any body wear because she needs to be able to move around fast. She can't have any sort of chain mail. The only thing that's going to cause the Lord event actions are actual combat. Her noise is two, so she's super quiet. She can hold five items. Uh, she has her four cards here. Uh, she also has three coins. She only has three action points around, though, instead of four. We're now just about ready to start playing. We want to grab out our starting tile. We know it's the starting tile because it is double-sided. You can see this blue arrow. You want to have that one closer to the edge of the table because this means that we cannot place any tiles past this farther south. Now, normally, all of these would just create one stack, but because of our scenario, we have three different stacks of tiles. I'm not going to keep them here. I'll keep them off the board uh, so they're not in the way, but I just wanted to show you that. We're going to place both of our heroes. Now, this game right now does have standees, but what, from what I understand, the expansion that's coming out will include minis, which will be pretty awesome. Uh, so I'm going to have them lay flat so you guys can see them. With that, though, I think we're ready to start playing. Let's go ahead and look at our turn structure and then start the game. Turn structure in this game is nice and simple. First, you're going to determine initiative and pass out turn order tokens. Now, if you're playing with any more than two players, you'll all roll for, in, for the initiative. The lowest number die will go first. That person who is the lowest number also has the opportunity to go last instead if they would like. They're the only one that gets that option. So because of that, though, since you're playing two player, we can choose whoever's going to go first each round. So I'm not going to even worry about rolling for initiative. Then we've got our players turns. When it's your turn, you can use action points. So we've got four for Sephenrine and three for Saskia. Then uh, we can also, or we will have to draw an immediate Lord Events card as a result of any ability or risk cards. But at the beginning, that will be decreasing the threat meter instead. And then if we have any effects on our health or experience, we immediately update those as well. Then after our turn, we'll have to draw Lord Event cards based on the actions listed on our hero board as long as they're out and then adjust any counters that haven't moved. 
Then uh, we'll do the same thing for both players. After both players have gone, what we'll do is we'll look at any of the enemies that are on the board, see if they have any abilities that apply. We'll also decrease any of our event length meters. And the merchant also has some merchant tokens that we use to, if we want the merchant to go grab a specific item for us, it can take three turns, but we can actually get them to put a, spe a specific item in the merchant area so that we can buy it later. So then we'll take all of those down. Let's jump into the playthrough, shall we? So I think I'm going to have Sephenrine go first. So I'm going to give her this one shield token to remind myself of that. Uh, when it's your first turn of the game, you get to go to the merchant for free. Normally it costs two AP to go to the merchant. Let's do it for free. So we'll go there and we can buy anything that we want with our three coins. There are two cards in the equipment deck that look awesome for her. We've got the fire robe here. That's going to increase her defense by one. And we have our staff here, although it is two-handed, uh, that will increase her power by one. But that's going to cost her all three coins. So she's going to give up all three to the merchant. But that does mean she can now slot these on her hero board. Because the staff takes two hands, Jack recommends putting it between the two spots to remind yourself. So that's why I've placed it here. I've updated her power to four. And then the fire robe over here, you can see the symbol matched. Some of the uh, body items our fire mage would not be able to wear, but this one she can. Ice also has no effect, which is awesome because that was one of her weaknesses. It's no longer a weakness from how I understand that. So she now has a defense of four and a power of four. And that took no actions, which is awesome. After going to the merchant, Saskia is not going to be at a disadvantage because she went second. So we're going to replace the two cards that Sephenrine purchased. And she purchased two of these um, equipment items. So we're going to replace them with a sword and a bow. We can also ask the merchant to run and grab us something from the deck. It'll take them three rounds to get it. So we're going to ask for the super health potion, potion, which can help heal. But we're going to have to wait three rounds before that's available at the merchant. Then we'll have to go back there and actually buy it if we want it. But hey, I definitely think healing 10 health would be amazing. <laughs> so let's go ahead and ask for that and hopefully we'll get it. Now we'll move into Sephenrine's first actions. And her first action she's going to do is called Firelight. She's going to use one of her four ability cards. This card here will cost us one of our AP, so we'll have three left. It states here we can reveal undiscovered rooms based on our level. Well, our level is one, so it's going to be one room. Firelight travels straight and is stopped by walls. After we do this, we have to draw a Lord event card, and surprise events are no longer in effect. Now remember that Lord Event card, we're not going to have to actually draw. Instead, we're going to decrease that threat meter. Let's go ahead and shoot our firelight straight north. So I grabbed one of the north tiles, flipped it over, and do you see that we have this uh, spot here that has the blue arrow? We have to connect that room that way. Oh, this is tile 12. If we look at our tile content chart, number 12 is debris one more and that would have been a mist so what we'll do is we'll grab a debris token and we'll drop it here someone for one ap if they would like to would can go into here and check out what this debris is now that we've resolved our firelight we won't move down our threat meter by one so we'll go down to 13. now the fun part about our ability cards is you never have to discard them so sephenrine still has the firelight available to her so she's going to go ahead and use it again for action two I'm just going to do this now so I don't forget. Decrease our threat meter by one again. We're going to go down to 12. And let's go ahead and reveal over here. And we have tile number six. Remember, we need to find tile number four. So that was actually pretty close. Uh, we'll place it here. Don't forget that we cannot go south. So this room, we can only go farther left if we want to. This is a wall. We have a wall up here. So we kind of blocked ourselves out this way. Yeah, we can see how we're building the dungeon. Number six. Ooh, number six is a body. So we found a body in this room, but still no mist. So I think for our third action, we're going to do the same thing. Use our firelight and check out this area. We'll go down to an 11 and we'll reveal our tile from over here. And we have a tile number 15. Ooh, this one's going up this way. A number 15. Beautiful. That is a mist. So now normally when you move in and you reveal a mist, you potentially could have a surprise effect or surprise event. We can just discard the effect of that and we can find out what enemies are in there. That means that Saskia, when she moves in there, can have the advantage of knowing what she's going to encounter. We'll reveal that top mist card and when we have, ha, we have a surprise event. Not even going to read it because we don't have to worry about it. All we have to do is draw H plus one enemies. H is the number of heroes. We have two heroes, 
Two heroes plus one, we're gonna draw a total of three minions. Three minions are gonna be in that room. Let's see what we find for our first three minions. We have a sub demon. Ooh. So up here, it tells us the total health of the enemy. It's four. This tells us their hit chance. So they're trying to roll a, a what is that, a 15? Yeah, 15 or lower. Uh, this tells us what their power is. Their power is five, and they attack with ice. So if you've weakness to ice, they're going to deal plus two damage to you. Uh, they can actually attack at a range, a range of three. Over here, they are weak to fire attacks, and they have a total of four defense or armor. Okay. That was our first one. Our second one is just a basic skeleton. Hits on a 15 or lower. Ooh, he has poison. So if you're weak to poison, which of course, um, Sephenreen is weak to poison. And then our third one we have is a skeleton warrior. Uh, this one, ooh, it has a minus one here. So what that means is your hit chance is reduced by one when you attack them. That's kind of their way of reducing your chances of hitting them. And the, he hits on a 16, four health. Power of five, however, plus one power for each skeleton in the room. There are two skeletons, so his power is seven, defense of four. For every set of three enemies, you get to draw one of these rewards cards. Now, you don't get to look at it. I'm just going to place it with them. Uh, but if I, let's say, had four minions, I'd get to draw two of these. But I only have three, so I'm just going to draw one of these. And I'll place them with the minions. What I'll do now is I'll place this token here to denote that that's where those minions are. So I'll place that A token there, and then on these minions and reward card, I'll just place this A token here to remind myself those are the enemies that are there. If anyone walks into that room, those enemies will immediately engage them. I have one more action left for Sephenreen. I don't think I'm going to do anything. I could, and this is something unusual in this game that I've never seen before. If I had an ability like this one, let's say, that costs three uh, total uh, action points. I could start that one now with my one remaining action point, and then at the beginning of my turn, spend the first two actions finishing it. However, I'm not in combat, so I can't do that, I don't think. Uh, so I don't want to move into that room, because if I move in there, they, the enemies will immediately engage, and then they will attack me because I have no more action points left. So I'm just going to end my turn. We now will move to Saskia. Saskia really likes to have either two swords or two knives, and there happens to be two swords available to her at the merchant. Remember, we can go to the merchant for free just on our first turn. So I'm going to go ahead and spend all three of my gold to buy a fine sword and a regular sword. That's going to increase our power by two and our hit chance by two as well. Our total power now is six. That's awesome. And our hit is 17 or lower. It's going to be hard for us to miss. <laughs> Now, because we have two swords out, we're going to don the black. This costs us zero action points as well. It states, attached to a hero board if there are two knives or swords equipped. Remains in effect as long as this condition is met. If you look here, we get plus two to our total action points. That's what that symbol means, is that's the action symbol. So we're going to get plus two action points as long as we have both of those. Wow, that's really epic. I, you know... Yeah, I haven't played her before. <laughs> we now have five action points. And action points, not only are they super helpful because you, the more actions you do, the more things that you can do. Enemies, when, you when they attack you, you can lower their hit chance by however many action points you normally get. So she, because she's so quick with five action points, she can dodge those attacks easier uh, because enemies are going to reduce their hit chance by five. <laughs> So cool. We'll replace those two cards at the merchant with silent sandals and a shield. Well, I feel like it's as good as time as any to start off with a combat. Remember, you want as many action points as possible when you move into combat because that gives you more opportunities to do damage. So I'm going to go ahead and move into this room, and that's going to immediately move me into combat, which means our threat meter gets pushed down by two. So we're already down to nine. Yeah, that dungeon lord's coming out quick. Whenever you get into combat, you're going to grab your enemies and place them out in front of you like so, in sets of three. Once again, like I was saying before, for every set of three, you're going to have a rewards card. So if, for example, I had another minion, I would place them up here. And then I'd also place another reward card here. 
when all the enemies up here are defeated, then this uh, reward card would be revealed. We wouldn't get it. We'd have to spend an action point in that room to pick it up, but we could see what it is. And how this works is if this enemy is defeated, then this one would slide down like so. Same with if we defeated this enemy, you're going to always slide enemies down. So you always have three in the front row because most of the minions will attack at range one. But like this sub demon, he could be up to three range back and still attack you. Yeah, they, they can be brutal, especially at higher player counts. I will go ahead and take this back. And now we have different options. So what we could do is we could use one of our ability cards. We have the windmill, because if we have two swords, we can do this. We have uh, the close encounters. We can't do that because we don't have two knives. But we have a shadow attack when attacking enemies focused on another hero. So the only one that we can do is the windmill. But that's going to take two of our actions. I don't think we're going to start with that. Instead, we're going to spend one action point. We're going to go down to three, and we're going to do a basic attack. So when you do a basic attack, we have our two hit value of 15. Uh, then we add our two here. That's a total of 17. We're going to declare our target. Our target's going to be this skeleton skirmisher. He should be pretty easy. So we need to roll a 17 or lower to hit him. We'll give our die a roll and we rolled a three. Beautiful. That means based on our power, we're dealing him six points of damage. <laughs> With that six points of damage, we need to look at his defense value. His defense value is three. Nothing else is affecting that. So we take our power, which is six, minus his defense, which is three. We're going to deal him three points of damage. His health is three. That means he's removed and we've defeated him. Now, something I'm just going to explain here. Let's say we attacked him for only two points of power damage. He has a total of three armor. If you deal zero or negative one points of damage, you will still deal one damage to the enemy. If you do less than that, let's say it was minus two or minus three, you wouldn't deal any damage. I think that's just a way of even a high defense enemy, you can still hit even if you get to zero or negative one. But since we right now are three above, we deal the three damage, we defeat him. So I'm going to remove him and I'll gain one experience point. Now I'll gain that one experience point even if I didn't defeat him. I just have to hit an enemy. As long as I hit the enemy, I'll gain an experience point. I'll use my next action point, so I'll only have two remaining, and I'm going to attack this skeleton warrior. Now, normally I hit on a 17. He's gonna make that minus one, so I hit it a 16 and lower. We'll roll up our die, and we rolled an 18. So that means we totally missed. <laughs> Well, I think that's going to decide it for me. I'm going to spend my last two actions. I'm going to use my windmill. If you have two swords equipped during combat, attack one enemy with additional power based on your level, plus three. So I'm going to hit him for a total of nine damage, six plus three, but it's going to take us our final two actions. However, if I do hit, I get plus one experience point on hit. I still need to roll a 16 or lower. I rolled a one. My normal power is six. That added plus three for nine, nine minus four, five damage. He only has four health. He's gone. And that's our second XP. Beautiful. Now I was hoping, I was hoping that I was going to be able to do two basic attacks on him and hit him two times and gain one additional experience. But with that miss, I was getting nervous. So that will though end her turn. She's done all of her actions. And since there's an enemy engaged with her, this sub demon is going to attack. Now, his two hit value or hit chance value is 15. However, Saskia has a total of five action points. 15 minus five is 10. So I have to roll a 10 or lower to have him hit. Looking for an 11 or higher, we got a 12. So total miss, perfect. Let's go ahead now and end the round. So at the end of the round, the only thing that we'll do is take this down to a two. It'll be two more rounds before this is available at the merchant. Uh, we don't have anything else. We don't have any uh, event markers to take care of. So now we'll start that next round. We can decide who's going to go first. I'm thinking it might be nice to have Sefenrin be able to go so she can get an attack or two in and get some experience. So let's start with Sefenrin again. Well, I talked about having Sefenrin come here and do combat. But I think instead, let's go ahead and check out this body, shall we? So we're going to spend action one to move here. Action two, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove this, and we're going to draw a card from the body deck. There's a lots of goodies in here and lots of not so goodies. Uh, we have an event. As you search the body, you begin to feel very strange. Strength wells up inside of you. The body has been blessed by someone, uh, by some unknown being. We're going to get plus two to our power for three turns. See, that is awesome. 
For our third action, let's go ahead and use our firelight again. We're going to reveal one undiscovered tile and then push our threat meter down by one. And you can see here that means that the range is one tile versus the circle is range in combat and you can go up to three rows. This will tick our threat meter down to an eight, but we'll reveal another tile to the west and we have tile one. Okay, so tile one will be another body. <laughs> Okay, let's drop another body token here. And then the question becomes, do we want to get really far away from Saskia or do we want to stay together? You know, we can each fight. Well, actually, the biggest one I'm worried about is seven range. She does not have good defense. She has four defense. All right, let's, we'll have them go their separate ways. Maybe they can find a way to get together later. So that was our fourth action, right? Because our first one was to go ahead and move in here. Our second one was to reveal the body. Third was to reveal this. And fourth was to move into here. Our awesome Saskia here is going to go next. She's got five actions. She's going to spend one to go ahead and attack this sub demon. She needs to roll a 15 minus or a plus two, so 17 or lower. Let's see what we get. We get a seven. Six power minus the four defense means we just dealt two damage. You can see here he has four health, so he's still kicking. Uh, we'll move our experience point up to three. Let's go ahead and do that again. We'll give our die a roll, and we've got a 20. That's a total, total miss. All right, let's try it again for our third action. And we get a 15. Oh, just barely, but that's a hit. Six minus four again is two. He is gone. That will give us one experience. We're already at four experience now, almost halfway to leveling up. Then we get to see what this reward card is. It's going to be down on the table. Okay, it's a shield. Minus two to uh, ice damage has no effect. Ugh. That's okay. I will say something that's important is up here in the top right. It tells you what level a hero can use this. If you've got stronger items, you have to be at a higher level to actually use it. Now we could pick this up and sell it, and we could sell it for three gold. So I might still, and I only have two actions left. I do think I'm actually gonna do it. I'm gonna spend one and I will pick this up. I can carry a total of five items. That's my first item. With that one action left, we are going to move back into the merchant's spot. Now, something I do want to mention, we did not decrease the threat meter when we had or continued our combat. That's because you only reduce the threat meter when you begin combat by two. If combat takes multiple rounds, it does not decrease the threat meter each time. So that's just something important to note. We'll end our second round by ticking this down to a one. And unfortunately, Seferin has already used one round of her plus two power. We'll then go ahead and start with Seferin again. And I think this time we're going to be a little risky and we're just going to move. It's going to uh, cost one on our threat meter. We're going to move here. That's moving north. So let's go ahead and grab one of the north tiles. This is number nine. So we'll place that like so. And we have to move into there. Now, number nine on here says it's a debris. <laughs> we found a lot of stuff. Um, but we haven't found tile number four. We'll then now try and explore a tile over here. That puts us down to already a six on our threat meter. And we'll move this over. Uh, do we want to use our ability? No, let's move into it. We're going to move into it. We'll grab this tile. And we have a tile number 22. So we'll place that here. Okay, we can keep exploring that way. What's in tile 22? Oh, we have a chest in tile 22. So I'll place a chest token there. Now, chests are a little bit different than body uh, and obstacle tokens. Chests, you can't just simply open. You either have to have a key, which we could have purchased, but we didn't have enough money, or you have to have some sort of ability that can bash open chests. Don't have that for seven rings. So I think, I think we're just going to keep moving. Let's go ahead and check out another north tile. <laughs> that means we're going to push our threat meter. I mean, I don't, we have to do it. We're going to go down to five. We have to find these tiles and we kind of need to find some experience. This is going to put us down to what, how many we've done one, two. This is our third action. We'll only have one action left. And the tile that we have found is the first teleport tile. Cool. So if we can find the second tile, and you can see the symbol here, we can teleport between the two tiles. Also, the uh, Dungeon Lord can teleport as well. So you got to be careful of that. But you can use that to potentially get away or get around the map a little easier. And we definitely did just explore there. So let's move in there. I think the final action we're going to do, our fourth one, we are going to use our firelight. I'm not going to just walk in there because I don't have any action points left. Let's go ahead and explore here. But that does mean we're going to move ourselves down to threat meter of four. 
and let's reveal our tile. And what we get is, oh, a specialty tile. You can spend your whole turn here and get uh, heal yourself by 10. First thing Saskia is going to do is she's going to spend two of her five AP to sell her blazing fire shield. She's going to gain three coins for that, and then she can buy this key. Open treasure chests, do not discard after use. Nice. So now she can open treasure chests, any of them, and she doesn't have to discard it. And you can see here that's a pocket item, so that's not going to take a slot for her, and she gained one coin. But she will only have three actions left. Now what I'd love to do is go one, two, and then check out this chest, but you can see this wall here. That blocks me off. I can't move into that tile. So I think I'm just going to move one, two, three, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to check any of these ones out. We'll check them out maybe later. Let's go ahead and end the round. By ending the round, we now have the super health potion available to us. And our second time has already passed on our event. To start that next round, I think I'm going to start with Saskia because I really want to see what's in this chest. So we're going to spend action one to move into here. Action two, let's go ahead and use that key, unlock that chest, and see what we can find. Let's see what we can find in this chest. Okay, we found a piece of gold, so that's going to cost us one to hold that. But when we go to the merchant the next time, we can convert this into three coins. Well, I think we're going to be brash. We've got three more action points left. I'm going to push this down to a three, you guys. Oof. We're going to move one, and then second action we're going to explore over here, and that's why we pushed it down. Oh, we found tile number eight. We'll put it like so. Tile number eight is debris, so we're still okay. And then with our one action left, because we're definitely going to be risky, let's check out that debris. Hopefully it's something good. I don't know. We'll see. Oh no, it's not. It's a, a golem. <laughs> this was not a pile of debris, but a sleeping golem that we just woke up. And hey, guess what? <laughs> we just woke him up. Uh, and that was our last action. Look at his power. Eight. Holy moly. He is, uh, we're going to end our turn. He's going to immediately engage us now because he engages us and we have an, a minion uh, that's fighting us. We will draw one reward card at least, but he's going to go ahead and roll trying to get a 16, ooh, minus five because we have five action points. So he's trying to roll an 11 or lower. I'll go ahead and roll our die here. That's a seven. Bummer. He's dealing us a total of eight damage. We do have five defense, so we only take three. We'll go from 13 down to 10. So that could have been worse. And actually it is somewhat worse because we're going to push our threat meter down to a one. <laughs> this is the last round. Sephenrine has the plus two power. So it's actually kind of nice. She's got a golem she can attack. So she's going to spend one of her four action points to move into this room. Now, you can move into a room with a hero that's in combat, and you can just continue on if you want. Because from a competitive standpoint, if you're playing competitively, you don't have to help out the other heroes. However, that is not how we're going to be playing, so we're going to go ahead and help out Saskia. When Sephenrain chooses to attack, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the rows that the hero that is in that room has of enemies. And you're going to take them almost from an exact opposite point of view. So if, let's say that uh, Saskia had three rows of enemies, the ones that were closest to Sephenrine to attack would be the third row, the third farthest from Saskia, because essentially they're farther away from Saskia, closer to the door where Sephenrine just came in. So that's why right now this golem is still technically engaged or focused on Saskia. Once we attack that golem, that golem's going to turn around and engage us. But for right now, he's still with Saskia, so I'm going to uh, leave him like so. Sephenrine has a total of three actions left. She's going to use the infusion of elements here. This is going to give her plus three power. She already has plus two because of that event. So her power is four plus two, which is six, plus three is nine. She also is going to get plus three for her hit chance. Her hit chance is 14. That's going to push her up to a 17. During combat, attack one enemy and add the power base on level. You may choose to add ice or fire damage. Well, this guy is weak to ice. So we're going to add ice to this damage, which means as long as we hit, we'll deal plus two points of damage. We want to just wreck this golem. Let's roll up. We got a 15. Oh, we just barely hit. Our total power was nine. Nine minus six is three points of damage. But guess what? 
because we added ice, that's going to deal plus two damage to him. So that's a total of five. He only has six health. We have one action left because that took two actions to do. What I'm thinking of doing is our regular attack. Now, our regular attack has a power level of four. If we just did our regular attack right now and we didn't have that event, we would take that four if we hit and then we compare it to that six here and we would be at a minus two from that armor. So we would do no damage. Oh, I need to not forget. We got one experience for that. Yes. Uh, but because we have our event, our event gets us to a total of six power. Six power compared to a six defense, as long as it is a one, zero, or negative one, you're going to deal one point of damage, which is just what we need. Also, if you look here, we have a range three with our basic attack, and it always has fire, just so you know. This roll, though, we're looking for a 14 or lower, and we got a 13. <laughs> oh, this golem almost dodged that. That'll be one more point of experience for Sephenrine, so we're at two. This golem is gone, and we get a reward card, and it's a great bow. That can only be used for level two. Uh, we'll place that in the room. I'm probably not going to pick that up. We'll move to the end of round. All we'll have to do is discard this event, which is actually amazing that we had that. If we had not had that, that would have been a much more challenging fight. Uh, then let's start the next round. Well, what do you guys say we start with Seven Rain again? And let's go ahead and start with her Firelight. I wish this gave her experience, but I also understand that you don't normally get experience by exploring, so that's probably why. Uh, but yeah, she's not going to gain experience. She is going to explore over here. I shouldn't say explore, reveal. What we have over here, we have tile number three, a straight tile. Tile number three is another body. So let's put a body token there. That was action one. And that means our threat meter is now at zero. So the next time we need to draw a dark uh, event card, or I should say a Lord event card, we're actually going to draw one. And we're going to see if we're going to spawn the dungeon Lord. And you know what? Why the heck not? Action two, let's go ahead and move into here. Action three, let's check out what's in this body spot. We'll flip our top body card and we have the Chrysophase Orb. Ooh, hero gains one extra AP per turn. Oh, heck yeah. One AP to permanently install on a sword, axe, bow, or knife. Oh, bummer, not a staff. So we can't get that to Sephenrine, but we can give that to Saskia. So we can do a trade action. Hmm. For now, I'll just put this in my pocket. It doesn't even take any carrying space. And you would think I would have learned my lesson, but I'm not going to. I'm going to explore. And the reason that I'm going to explore is doing an exploration now doesn't cause a Lord event uh, action for Sephenrine. The only thing that does is combat or running. <laughs> if we get into combat, though, we're going to have to draw one at the end of her turn. But uh, for now... We're, we're not going to get into combat, right? Oh, it's a seven tile. I have no idea. Seven. What is seven? Uh, seven is debris. Woo. Yep. See, I knew it. I knew it. But we still haven't found tile number four. Let's go ahead and grab debris and we're going to place her here. And of course, that's a dead end room. And just so you understand, the Lord event actions, if we do any of these actions, so if I do a combat action, I'm going to place a token here to remind myself. And at the end of my turn, I have to draw one Lord event card. But if I also run, which I haven't done yet, but running is essentially you can move two tiles for one action instead of one, or each tile is a half AP. Uh, but what that would mean is now I would draw two Lord event actions, but let's say I ran four tiles. So I did the run action twice. I'd still only draw one, uh, one card per, uh, you know, the first instance of that, it would happen. Saskia here has a total of five AP. She's going to spend one to move here. The only thing that causes her to draw a dark Lord event card at the end of her turn would be if she gets into combat. Action two, let's go ahead and explore over here. We have tile number 13. What is 13? Oh no, 13 is a mist. That likely means we're getting into combat. Let's place ourselves here. Let's see what we find in the mist. As you walk into the room, mist covers you. It is cold and damp and dreary. You say to yourself, how could anyone live here? A voice replies back, you get used to it, but you won't have to, I promise. <laughs> Draw two times the amount of heroes, so that's four, minus one, which is three. So we're going to draw three minions. Okay, and we have a total of three actions remaining. Our three minions that we have, we have another sub-demon. This one deals fire damage. Uh, the nice thing is, is uh, Saskia has no weakness. We have a skeletal hero, healer. 
Heal all enemies in this room one health during the end of round actions. And our third one, oh, we have a spider. I hate spiders. If the attack hits the hero, the hero cannot subtract AP until this enemy attacks again. So we become more likely to be injured. And don't forget, we have our one reward card. With our three enemies here, I think the one we're going to first focus on is that spider. We need a 17 or lower to hit. That's a three. We have six power minus the four defense. We just dealt two points of damage and we gained a fifth XP. I really want to level up. <laughs> we know what's coming soon. Oh, and I also need to remember, I'm going to place this on here to remind myself at the end of my turn, I'm drawing a Lord Event card. Here we go for our second roll and we have a seven. That's another hit. That'll be another XP. So we're at six. And then we also take out this spider. We have one action left. I'm going to go ahead and target that skeleton healer, but I am going to start my windmill here. I'm going to place one token on it. It's going to be the first thing I do next round uh, because it takes two actions to do it. And uh, we can add plus three to our strength of an, our attack. However, now that means both the skeletal healer and the sub demon are going to get shots at us while we're preparing our windmill. First roll is a 17 or lower. The second one is a, a 15 or lower, but don't forget we have five action points. So it's actually a 12 and a 10. Let's roll for the skeleton first at a 12. Oh, he got a 19, so that, me that means he missed. And a 10 for the sub demon. Ah, oh, he rolled a six, so he's gonna hit us. We just got hit for a total of five damage. We do have five defense, so that means we only get hit for one point of damage. We're down to nine, not terrible. At the end of Saskia's turn, because she has gotten into combat, we now have to draw the top card of the Lord Event deck. Okay, we don't care about what this says. We just look at if tile number 17 is out on the board. Based on what I'm seeing, I don't see any tile number 17. Beautiful, so he doesn't come out yet. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, so we'll end the round. That skeleton healer would try and heal someone, but all of the minions are healed. That's why I took out the spider and I prepared for a big attack next turn. Let's start the next round. And I think we're going to start off with Saskia. Now, before she goes, I think I should have one additional coin uh, because I only bought something for one coin and I traded in something that cost three. So I should have two coins instead of one. All right. So our first thing we did at the end of our last turn was play our windmill. And so we have to use our first action out of five to finish it. So we're going to do an attack. It's going to have plus three power. So we have a total of nine power. We're trying to roll a 17 or lower. We're trying to hit that skeleton healer. Come on, 17 or lower. And we got a six. We just attacked for a total of nine power minus the six defense this guy has. So we dealt him three damage. He's only halfway done. That will though gain us one experience point to seven. Well, I think the only way we're gonna take out that skeleton healer is if we use our windmill a second time. So it's gonna cost us two more AP. We're gonna go from four down to two, but we're gonna try hitting him again. We need a 17 or lower. Let's see what we get. And we get a four. That means we'll deal the final three damage to the skeleton healer. He will be at toast. We will gain another XP and we are at eight. We're only two away from leveling up the first time. Now we have two more AP. I think I'm gonna use both of those just to do a basic attack because our attack is for six. And so we'll deal two damage to the sub demon each time if we succeed, and then we can take him out and that would allow us to level up. We need two numbers of 17 and under. Oh, that's a one. Too bad there aren't any criticals in this game. And our second one a two, <laughs> beautiful. We'll go ahead and remove this sub demon from the board, put him at the bottom of the minion deck. We will gain two XP, which brings us to this 10, and you can see that symbol there. That means we're going to level up. So we'll actually put our experience all the way back to zero, move this up to level two. We immediately get to heal all the way up to our level two spot on here, and we'll get our, we'll get our level two ability. Not to mention now, if we want to get to level three, we have to get 12 more experience, just so you understand how that works. We have a ghost. This one says during combat, subtract from attacker's HC based on level. Well, it costs us three, wow, three action points to do it. But look at minus four. Oh my gosh. Plus our five action points. It's a minus nine. <laughs> and we get one experience point, which is kind of cool if we use that. We did defeat all the enemies in our row, so we'll get to reveal our reward card. And we have Steadfast Greaves. This just gives us plus one to our defense. We have to spend an AP to pick this up, so I'll just place it off to the side. Since we did have combat this turn, we will have to reveal one dungeon event or lord event card. And we have a two, so let's see if there's any of the two tiles out. 
I still see no two on the board. Great, so no Dungeon Lord yet. Now let's move to Sephenrine's turn. And I think the first thing that she is going to do... Oh, she's way over here. Yeah, she's not going to do anything incredibly interesting. I think... Oh, should we check this out? Yeah, let's spend one action because we've got four. Let's spend one to check out this, uh, this debris. What did she find in that pile of debris? She found a health potion. Great, so we'll go ahead and put that in our pocket. We'll then move three spaces for our final three AP. And we did not have a combat and we did not run, so we don't have to draw any Dungeon Lord cards. Let's move to that next round. Saskia is going to go first. I think the first thing she's going to do is pick up those Steadfast Greaves and go ahead and immediately equip them. That does mean that we have used two action points, one to pick it up and one to equip items. But now our defense is six instead of five. Action three, let's go ahead and move into Sephenrine's spot. And then action four, we're going to do the trade action. Sephenrine is going to trade the Chrysophrase Orb over to Saskia. That will be action four. Then action five, Saskia is going to go ahead and put this onto her sword, uh, which would be her fifth action, but then she gets one extra AP now per turn. So she'll have one AP left after uh, equipping that, and she'll move back to tile 13. But we did not get into combat, so no dungeon event or lord event card. We'll move to Sephenrine's turn. Sephenrine will go ahead and move one here for action one. Action two, she's going to just explore here. We're going to draw our tile, and we have tile number four. Tile number four, that's what we want. Okay, that is where the sentinel enemy is. So now it's the question of do we want to deal with it or not? Oh, and at four, we also will place a body token. Uh, so let's put that here, because remember, we can escape. Nah, let's, let's not escape. We'll go right in there. Let's take on this sentinel. The Sentinel does have armor of 9, which is a bit insane, and it has an ability that says when the attack hits, the hero loses 4 HC, so their hit chance, uh, until this enemy attacks again. So kind of brutal, but he is weak to fire. The nice part about weaknesses is no matter what, even if an attack would do no damage, you will automatically take two. So she can at least do some damage to this Gloomweaver. Let's see if any of her abilities can make it uh, where she can actually do some damage. Now this may not be the best tactical move, but I'm still going to do it because I want to show you. She's going to use her Wall of Fire that's perfect for this Gloomweaver. During combat, the Wall of Fire lowers the defense of all enemies based on level. So right now it's only one. Enemies weak to fire, which is the Gloom Weaver, will take one health damage each round the Wall of Fire is active. So now his defense is eight instead of nine, and we're going to gain an experience point, and he'll take one damage at the end of the round. We'll go from two to three experience, but that will use up all of our action points. Because we used up all of our action points, now the Gloom Weaver is going to attack us. And yeah, if you look at that Gloomweaver, he hits at a 15. Uh, so he has to roll a 15 or lower. However, we have four action points, so we subtract four from that. It's an 11 or lower, and he hits us. Let's see a high roll, shall we? Uh, no, we rolled a three. Bummer. He's hitting us for a total of 10 power. We have four defense. We just took six damage. We're down to nine. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Oh, well. Uh... We are going to end the round, and with that ending of the round, we'll place one damage on the Gloomweaver, so the Gloomweaver now has nine health. Our Wall of Fire has had one round that it's been going, so we'll place one marker on here. Oh, I do need to remember, we did get into combat. We did not run, but we did get into combat, so we have to draw a Lord Event card. Let's flip over our top card, and we have Tile 15. Oh boy, tile 15, right here. The Dungeon Lord is going to spawn here. He's kind of far away from us. That's good. But he, well, let's see. He's going to have to go this way, followed like that to catch us. Well, this is going to be interesting. In the base game, there's only three Dungeon Lords. So there's a one of three different types. And we have Zagon the Giant. On attack rolls of one through three, Zagon stuns every hero in the room. The attack does no damage. He hits on an 18 or less. He attacks for 13 damage and has armor of 11, and he is not weak to anything. Oh boy, that is going to be fun. This is why you don't want to kill him. You want to run from him. 
Well, we effectively have a time bomb chasing us now <laughs> with that giant here. We're over here. Let's start our next round. I'm going to start with Saskia. She's going to spend her first out of her six AP to move into the same room. And then she's going to attack that Gloom Weaver. Remember, the Gloom Weaver right now has minus one to its armor. Let's try this shadow attack for fun. Now, once again, maybe not the best idea here, but I want to show you the other abilities. Uh, so we have, remember, she's a level two, so it's a plus five to her power. When attacking enemies focused on another hero, add power based on the level and enemies will not focus on you. Attack any, and any enemy on outside of formation. Well, there's only one enemy, so we're good. Do not draw Lord of End card. Oh, I thought we were going to have to. Oh, maybe this is actually pretty good. So we've got five. We're going to spend three, one, two, three. If we hit, which our total hit chance is 17, if we hit, we're going to do 5 plus the 6, that's 11 total power of damage. 17 or lower. Oh, a 13, that'll work. 8 compared to 11 means we just did 3 points of damage to him. Only 3. <laughs> He's not even at half health yet. That will give us 1 experience though. Woohoo! And then I think we all know what we're going to do for our final 2. We're going to windmill. Takes two actions. If you have two swords, yep, attack one enemy. We're going to add plus four. So we'll deal a total of 10. So this will deal two damage as long as we get a 17 or lower. But then this Gloom Weaver is going to focus on us because we're attacking it, not from the shadows. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, that's a 12. Yes. The Gloom Weaver only has eight armor. We'll do a total of two damage to him. He's now at half health, five damage. <laughs> Okay, but now he's going to attack, unfortunately, attack Saskia. He is rolling a 15, but we've got six action points. So subtract that. He has to roll a nine or lower to hit. Let's see what we get. A 15. Beautiful. Totally missed. At the end of our turn, we are going to have to draw one Lord Event card because we did uh, combat. Now we can ignore the 13, move one towards the closest hero. That's pretty simple. The only place he can go is the center tile. That poor merchant, hopefully he's uh, staying away. <laughs> it's Sephenrine's turn, and we're going to go ahead and do our infusion of elements here. It's going to give us plus three for our hit chance, but remember we're at minus four because of the Gloomweaver. So normally we need a 14. We'll add three, 15, 16, 17, but then we'll subtract four, 16, 15, 14, 13. So I need to roll a 13 or less to hit. If I do, though, I'm going to deal a total of seven damage. Well, he has eight armor. That means at least I get to deal one damage, plus this will be a fire attack, two on top of that. Yeah, so it's going to take two actions to do. Let's do it. 13 or less. That's a two. That'll work. We'll deal one damage because of our base attack is at a minus one. Then we'll deal two more because he's weak to the fire attack we just dealt to him. We're going to gain one XP, and I'm realizing Saskia should have gained another XP, so she's at two XP instead of one. And I'd say, what the heck, let's try that again. 13 or less, that's a 12. <laughs> That'll work. That's going to take the Gloomweaver out, I think. We'll deal the one damage because of the attack, plus two more because of the uh, weakness. And I believe 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Beautiful, we just took him out. We're also going to increase our experience to 5. We'll now have the orb on the ground. Now, it takes us an AP to pick it up, and we have used all four of our actions to do that attack so we're gonna have to end our turn draw a lord event card and then next round all we've got to do is pick this thing up and run to the starting tile we'll flip our next card and we have oh, a rampage so what happens with a rampage is the dungeon lord will move in a random direction three spaces until he hits a wall doesn't matter what's there even if he goes through an area with a hero he will move right past them uh, just moving the total of three possible spaces let's see where he goes That'll be a seven. With a seven, he's going to move east. That's awesome. And I think because of that, we should be able to win the game here. He's gonna move over here. That means for our next round, so we're gonna start the next round, the wall of fire is removed because uh, of the two events or two rounds that it was out. We'll move to Saskia's turn. She's gonna pick up that orb for action one. Then she's going to run. Action two to run. Action uh, let's see, where do I have to go? Yeah, action three here, action four here, action five. <laughs> As you can see here, we had to retrieve the orb and return it to the starting tile without any hero becoming exhausted. Check. So there you have it. That was Dungeons of Infinity. Now, I had a lot of fun playing this, and I will say those scenarios are fun, they're, they're enjoyable, uh, but the game where I've had the most fun has been the campaign. 
the the writing is solid the story is interesting you get to play all 10 characters then and you get to experience what i think is the true uh the the true feeling of dungeons of infinity because in a lot of the scenarios, he's going to have specific tiles that'll come out or specific cards that are in these decks. So you'll have a more uh, a, a more tailored experience. Uh, this is also fun for a nice dungeon delve, but for me, I like that uh, that more tailored experience. And so the campaign for me is where it's at. Hopefully, if you guys like this, uh, you can pick it up. I'll put in the description below where you can order it. Also, there will be an expansion coming soon, and I am going to check that out, especially if I can get some minis. I think the minis will look awesome running around the board. Thank you so much for watching, Jack. Thanks for giving me this copy. I can't wait to continue the campaign with my son, and I will catch you at the next stop.